Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Well, today is the day. My final prayer for my consecration to Jesus through Mary with this incredibly intense consecration by St. Louis de Montfort. True devotion to Mary. I have to admit, I learned so much about Mary and Jesus and how they are one and the same. And I never really thought about Mary in this way, so I am very grateful and actually on cloud nine, if you will, that I have a new devotion to her that's true and not false, one that isn't hot and cold or even lukewarm or just exteriorly and not interiorly. I've been going to her all the time, asking her to help to take all my prayers to Jesus because her heart is pure. Mary doesn't even exist anymore. Mary is totally filled with the Spirit of God. While she is not God, super important to remember that, she has been given so much because ever since her incarnation, her immaculate conception, I should say, excuse me, ever since she was born in her mother, conceived in her mother, God showered her with grace, kept her hidden. In the book, it says she was even really hidden from her parents. Even the angel said, who is that? All for the time when an angel, Gabriel, the archangel, comes down with a message from God, which is where the Hail Mary comes from. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. She was filled with God's spirit, a sinless tabernacle. And then the Holy Spirit comes over her. The incarnate word is inside her, hidden in her womb. Her and Jesus, he's growing inside of her. She is in him. He is in her. The two are inseparable. He is being raised by her, the bosom of her, her milk nourished by her, taught by her. He labored with her in St. Joseph was obedient to her for 30 years. As a matter of fact, did his first spiritual type of miracle, if you will, when she visited Elizabeth. This is the feast day, the visitation. Mary hightails it up to the, to the hill country and walks in to greet Elizabeth. And her womb was given grace from Jesus and Mary's through Mary's voice. And that was when St. John was blessed and filled with grace and did not sin and was the heralder, if you will, of Jesus, basically making the way straight for Jesus to come on earth and to be known, I should say, really. And that was the first miracle through Mary. Then the second one was in nature. 
when Mary said they have no wine. And so, boom, he doesn't want to start woman, doesn't even call her by her name. And it was interesting in the book, instead of equating her to Eve, the woman, the new Eve, which one can also think that, St. Louis de Montfort made it be like he was still keeping her hidden. Didn't say, Mom, come on. No, woman, what do you have to do with me? It's not my time. Amazing. Second miracle. So through, within, Mary and Jesus are together. You cannot separate the light from the sun or the heat from the fire, and that is how these two work. And so one thing I want to share with you, and maybe you will try this the next time you receive Holy Communion. So today is a big day for me. I'm heading to Communion. I've got my stuff written down. I'm sorry, not Communion. Confession first, so that I am completely clean when I do receive Communion in Mass afterwards. So I'm kind of hightailing it over the the green earth here to get to confession early. And one of the manners of practicing this devotion to Mary when receiving Holy Communion is to ask for Mary's heart to be put into our heart, to replace our heart because her heart is pure. And when we receive Jesus, to receive Jesus in Mary's heart and to talk to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit to receive the grace of God in Mary's heart in our souls so that Mary and Jesus can reside there. So it's a lot. I'm going to just, it's not a lot. Don't freak out, but it's a lot of words. And I wrote a cheat sheet to it, but just play this over and over again. Before communion, Humble yourself profoundly before God. So you must renounce your corrupt interior and your dispositions, however good your self-love may make them look. (laughs) I kind of laughed at that because how often do we think that our sins ain't that bad, right? And they're not that bad. Yeah, we do that to ourselves. And we should renew our consecration by saying totus tuus, ego sum, Et omnia mia tua sunt, or in English, I am all thine, my dear mistress, with all I have. And then we ask and implore that the good mother lends her heart that we may receive her son there with the same disposition as her own. You will, resent, re, you will represent to her that it touches her son's glory to be put into a heart so sullied and so inconstant as yours, which would not fail to either lessen his glory or to destroy it. But if she will come and dwell with you in order to receive her son, she can do so by the dominion which she has over all hearts, and her son will be well received by her without stains, without danger of being outraged or destroyed. You will tell her confidently that all you have given Her of your good is a little matter to honor her, but that by the holy communion you wish to make her the same present as the eternal Father gave her, and that you will honor her more than if you gave her all the goods in the world. And finally, that Jesus, who loves her alone, still desires to take his pleasure and his repose in her, even in your soul, though it be filthier and far poorer than the stable, where he made no difficulty to come, simply because Mary was there. You will ask for her heart by these tender words, Apicio te in mea omnia probe mihi cortuum o Maria. Okay, then at communion, on the point of receiving Jesus Christ after the Our Father, you say three times, Domine non sum dignus. Say the first one to the eternal father, telling him you are not worthy because of your evil thoughts and ingratitudes towards so good a father to receive his holy son, but that he is to behold Mary, his handmaid, who acts for us 
and who gives us singular confidence and hope with his majesty. And then we'll say to the son, Domine no sum dignus, telling him that you are not worthy to receive him because of your idle and evil words and your infidelity to his service, but that nevertheless you pray him to have pity upon you, that you may introduce him into the house of his own mother and yours, and that you will not let him go without his coming to lodge with her. You will pray him to rise and come to the place of his repose into the ark of his sanctification. Tell him to put no confidence at all in your merits, your own strength, and your own preparations, as Esau did. But you trust only in Mary, your dear mother, as the little Jacob did in the cares of Rebekah. Tell him that sinner and Esau as you are, you dare to approach his sanctity, supported and adorned as you are with the virtues of his holy mother. And then lastly, you say to the Holy Ghost, Domine non sum dignus, tell him that you are not worthy to receive this masterpiece of his charity because of the lukewarmness and iniquity of your actions, because of your resistance to his inspirations, but that all your confidence is in Mary his faithful spouse, you shall say with St. Bernard, Oh, hec me maxima fiducia, hec tota ratio spimea. You can pray even to him to come himself and marry his indissoluble spouse, telling him that her bosom is as pure and her heart as burning as ever, and that without his descent into your soul, neither Jesus nor Mary will be formed, nor yet worthily lodged. Okay, really easy. You cry out to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that you are not worthy, but with Mary's heart in your soul, in your heart, replacing your heart, you rely on all of her virtues and her merits, not your own. And please come dwell in your heart so that Jesus and Mary can be formed there. Now, after Holy Communion, we're almost done. While you are inwardly recollected and holding your eyes shut, you will introduce Jesus into the heart of Mary. You will give him to his mother, who will receive him lovingly, will place him honorably, and will adore him profoundly, will love him perfectly, will embrace him closely, and will render to him in spirit and in truth many homages which are unknown to us in our thick darkness. Or else we will keep yourself so profoundly humbled in your heart and in the presence of Jesus residing in Mary, or you will sit like a slave at the gate of the king's palace where he is speaking with the queen, and while they talk to one another without need of you, you will go in spirit to heaven and over all the earth praying all creatures to thank, adore, and love Jesus and Mary in your place. Or you shall yourself ask of Jesus in union with Mary, the coming of his kingdom on earth, through Mary his holy mother. Or you shall sue for the divine wisdom, or for divine love, or for divine pardon of your sins, or for some other grace, but always by Mary and in Mary, saying while you look aside at yourself, Lord, look not at my sins, but let your eyes look at nothing in me but the virtues and merits of Mary. And then remembering your sins, you shall add, It is I who have committed these sins. My Jesus, you must increase in my soul, and I must decrease. Mary, you must increase with me, and I must be still less than I have been. O oh, Jesus and Mary, increase in me and multiply yourselves outside in others too. There are an infinity of other thoughts which the Holy Ghost furnishes and will furnish you if you are thoroughly interior, mortified, and faithful to this grand and sublime devotion which I have been teaching you. But always remember that the more you leave Mary to act in your communion, the more Jesus will be glorified. The more you leave Mary to act for Jesus and Jesus to act in Mary, the more profoundly 
will you humble yourself and will listen to them in peace and silence without putting yourself in trouble about seeing, tasting, or feeling. For the just man lives throughout on faith and particularly in Holy Communion, which is an act of faith. That's a lot. But basically, when you receive Jesus and Holy Communion and you're walking back to your pew, just imagine Jesus and Mary coming together. You can use those different scenes, right? A king and a queen, or just Jesus and Mary together, loving and hugging one another, embracing one another, and you just witnessing it. And then allowing the Holy Spirit to put other thoughts in your head, but you always being one that's looking on to this beautiful union of Mary and Jesus who are always in one another. Again, the end game is Jesus. We are consecrating ourselves to Jesus, but we're going through his holy mother whom he loves as if it's himself who the Father and the Holy Ghost also have taken such favor with. She was chosen. She said yes. Her spouse is the Holy Ghost, meaning she is filled with the Spirit of God, and she, her body, created Jesus, took care of Jesus, nurtured Jesus, taught Jesus. The miracles are through Mary. She's the mediatrix of of grace. I just wish I knew this earlier and had this understanding and knowledge. And I know that the spirit is moving it into my heart where it's living and breathing. And I keep listening to the book. I keep playing it over and over again because there are these little gems. It is deep. I'm not going to lie. It's a hard, (laughs) it's a hard read. Like I, I don't think I would be good to read the book, but listening to it for me, has been a game changer. So I invite you, go out and find an audible version if that's your way, but you may be a great reader. It's intense. It's kind of like old English, big words, tough, tough, tough to get into. It's heavy. It's deep. That's why people said it was intense. That's probably why I haven't done it until now. So I'm looking forward to experiencing this powerful day. I've already said my consecration prayer. I need to sign it and I'm going to spend some time in adoration and just being grateful. And I'm going to, again, do bodily mortifications, calling on Mary, stepping out of my comfort zone and getting into a new pattern of life that I know is going to be spiritually and physically and mentally better for me. I hope that you have prayed as we talked about yesterday. Are you afraid of getting out of that comfort zone? Are you afraid of failure? There's nothing to be afraid of if we've got Mary and Jesus and the Father and the Holy Ghost We can do anything. Let's not forget St. Joseph, our guardian angel, all the angels and saints. We have an army behind us who wants us to be holier, who wants us to be better people, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So let's call on the holy army to help us so that we can love one another like we are supposed to and be holy And like little Marys and Jesus on this earth, the world needs it so badly. Okay, I love you all. Thank you for taking this ride with me in this consecration to Jesus through Mary. Again, True Devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort. I encourage everyone, even if you don't go through the actual consecration, to really Read it, listen to it, and understand this relationship with Mary and Jesus, which is inseparable. Even the demons 
have to give Mary the, the credit and speak of her truth, how blessed she is. Okay. <laughs> have a blessed and inspired day.